Hey family, Joshua Washington here. Uh, welcome back for another week. And today, this week, we're going to be talking about hope, this topic of hope. And this came to mind by reading an article from a, a man named Paul Tripp. And here's why. The reason why we're getting on this topic today is because I think it is a very, very, very important subject. And if you take an assessment and you look around you or you look out into the world, if hope was represented like in a form of, of the gas tank that we have in our cars, would you say that hope seems to be running high around us or really low? Odds are, if you've been paying attention, you would say hope seems to be teetering on that low end. And the reason is because I don't think people understand what, what, what are the elements of hope and, and how do we maintain our hope in tough times and difficult times when things aren't going our way, when we can't really see clearly. And today we're gonna to answer that question by breaking down what are the elements of hope that you need to pay attention to so that you can maintain hope in your life. All right, so there's three elements. There's three elements that make up hope. And again, this is about Paul Tripp. I read this this week and I thought, man, this would be great to kind of emphasize or a different take on hope. Because I talk about hope in the book, but I don't talk about it in this way. So shout out to you, Paul. But there are three elements, okay? Three elements that uh, make up hope. And the first here is what Paul describes as the assessment piece. The assessment piece. So what takes place during the assessment? Well, during the assessment, we say to ourselves, I need this thing or this, fill in the blank, to be satisfied. Like that's how we assess and connect to what hope is. Like the first step is I need this to be satisfied. And like raise your hand if you ever thought that. If you ever were hopeful that if you could just get this thing that oh by that would totally just fill your satisfaction cup. And that's, that's kind of the mistake that we, that's kind of, that's not a mistake. I won't say a mistake. I don't think we think about this assessment intentionally enough. And here's what I mean by that. When we think about the assessment, the danger is that our assessment can be rooted in deception. We can have the wrong idea or outlook to think that, hey, if I get this thing, it will satisfy me. Growing up as a young man, I used to think, the more women I can get, the more satisfied, the more validated, the more valued I'd be. And the truth was that that was a lie. That was deception. Because no matter how many women I, I spoke to, life didn't get more hopeful. You know, you might have felt good in the moment. And some of you men watching this, you've discovered this as well. It, it doesn't matter how much tail you chase. It's almost like a cup with, without a bottom. It does nothing to fill your cup of hope. But if we get to the root of that, the reason why you would pursue that in the first place is because you've made the wrong assessment. And that's just an example. I mean, you can fill in that blank with anything. It doesn't have to be chasing girls. It could be chasing, you know, you can have the mindset because it's not even the action yet. It's just the mindset that if I get this, I'll be satisfied. All right, so that's the first element of hope. We make this assessment. We determine in our mind that if I can get this, I will be satisfied. And as we're going through these, I want you to think, what are the things in your life that you have told yourself that if I can just get this, I will be satisfied? All right, we're going to bookmark that. We'll come back to it. The next element of hope, all right, is number two, expectation. Expectation is a major element of hope, okay? Because first it starts with the assessment, right? We tell ourselves, if I can just have this thing, I will be satisfied. And then expectation comes in and it says, hey, this thing that I'm looking for, it's going to be in the form of a career. It's going to be in the form of money. It's going to be in the form of sex drugs, substance. And so we pursue that thing because we made the assessment. 
and we go after it with the expectation that once we get our hands on it, hope will arise. And I think the place that we can see this the most, if you've ever seen a celebrity or someone who you thought, I think one of the saddest cases was recently we saw um, the, the young, beautiful model uh, that I think jumped out the window and committed suicide. And everybody's looking at this beautiful young woman like, what in the world happened? Because the expectation is, the assessment is, if I'm that beautiful, then I'll be satisfied in life. Man, if I can look that good, I'll be satisfied. Man, if I can get that job, I'll be satisfied. Man, if I can, you know, have that man or woman, I can be satisfied. That's the assessment. And then we pursue that with the expectation. We pursue that beauty. We pursue that career. And the danger is when we get that thing and it doesn't live up to the expectation. I talk about this in the book and I call it, I call it seasonal dreams. And those are the times in our lives where we, we, we have a dream and we think that dream is going to spark hope. We expect that dream to really carry us into the future and then it doesn't happen. It doesn't, you know, come to life. And the danger is when that dream expires, we may expire with it. Why? Because all of our expectation was attached to that thing that we made the assessment. Hey, this is going to bring me satisfaction. And this is so good, man. This is why some of us get into relationships, one relationship, one you know, terrible relationship after the other, because we're expecting that if we can find the right person, our life will just blossom into satisfaction. When the truth is, it's not about finding the right person, it's about becoming the right person. And so our, our assessment is misplaced. If you can become the right person, you will be satisfied. And I think that goes even deeper. That's why I, I never recommend that people put their expectations on other people to bring them hope. Can I just tell you, me and every other human that you see around you, if you put your expectations on us to satisfy you, you will be let down. Some of you have hurts that you've never healed from because your expectation was that this person was supposed to hold up satisfaction in your life. Or you gave that, you made an assessment that this person should be this way or be that way and then you'd be happy. That's why I despise the, 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 the phrase of you made me feel this way because it signifies putting your expectation on someone else to satisfy you. Which I don't think is completely wrong, but it what I'm, what I'm saying here is that it can set us up to attach our hope to something that will let us down. If you want to tie your expectations, if you're, if you're going to, let me say it this way, if you're going to tie your expectations to something or someone, make sure it's something or someone that cannot fail you. Well, Joshua, where in the heck do I find that? For me, I find it my faith in God, my faith in Christ. Hadn't let me down yet. Isn't that what the song says? Haven't failed me yet. I don't, I don't believe it will. But put me aside. Let's talk about you. What have you attached your expectation to? And how many times has it let you down? And how many times, which we get into the next one. So let me, let me, let me just slow down. How many times has it let you down? And if it has let you down and you've blamed it, here's why. And that's the third element. Here's why. If you've ever had, you know, expectation in someone or something to uphold your faith or to satisfy you, and they're going to let you down, you kept blaming that person, it's because of this third element here. And that, that third element is object. Object. Now, here's what Paul says about this object thing. He says, when we have expectations and we pursue that thing, we make that thing an object in our lives. Some would use another term and call it an idol. But that can sound like really religious. But really what it is, is it's an object. That can be a person. That can be a place. That can be a thing. Here's, here's, a, here's a great example. And I, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to save the, the political talk for maybe in a week or two. Because I got some ideas I, I want to share with you all. But anyways, 
Think about our government. Think about this. There are people who have put their hope in an object called our government. And so there are people who literally sit around every day looking at the government saying, do something for me. Do something for me. Fix this for me. And again, this isn't politics. This is talking about hope. Because we all know, if you haven't figured it out by now, the government will fail you. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's an institution that will fail you. And I'm not doing, I'm not picking on the government. I'm just saying the government is not meant to satisfy your life. That person is not meant to satisfy your life. That job is not meant to satisfy your life. The money is not meant to satisfy your life. I don't care how much sex, I don't care how much drugs, I, none of it will satisfy your life. And some of you have experienced this and you may not understand why. It's because you've started with the wrong assessment, carrying the wrong expectation. And when you finally get that object in your hands, you're disappointed because it never lived up to what you thought it would. I have friends that have made a good amount of money and they all tell me the same thing, man. Yo, I, I have the money, I got the women, and, and but I don't, like up here, my hope, my sense of hope, my sense of purpose, it's out of whack, it's out of alignment. And I hope this helps you to understand why. If you're going to put your hope into something, make sure it's something or someone that will not let you down. Start with your assessment. What is that thing that you believe will, if you can get that, will satisfy you? What's the expectation that you have? What do you expect that to bring into your life? I keep using relationships because I think we do that sometimes. We think if I can just find a husband or a wife, my life will get happier. And then you realize marriage is hard work. Got to emphasize that piece. It can be blissful, but you got to put in the work. Different subject, different day. But we expectations, what we're talking about. We put the expectation that if I can just get this, if I can just live my life this way, if I can just get everyone to accept me, I'll be happy. And the truth is you won't because even that will let you down. Your amount of, no matter how educated you are, even that will let you down. No matter how many degrees you, you acquire, no matter how many accomplishments you get, all those things will carry off in the wind if you don't attach your hope to a foundation that will not let you down. The government will let you down. Friends will let you down. <laughs> I mean, we can go on and on. But if you're really looking to be serious about this, this sense of hope and you want your life to go to the next level, then I challenge you today to focus on these three things. Focus on your assessment. Focus on expectation. Where are you putting your expectation? Focus on that object. What's that thing that you've been pursuing? Or what's that thing you've been blaming and not taking ownership over your life because you blame that? Maybe it's, maybe it's a parent or a loved one who you had hope in that you believe should have brought happiness into your life, but instead they betrayed you. I ain't trying to be, you know, your psychologist, but can we be real? It happens. And now you blame that object in the form of a person for why your life looks the way it looks. When really the truth is, the truth is, we just had the wrong expectation. We made the wrong assessment. And that assessment may be what should have gone, what should have happened. Like you may not even be wrong in wanting that assessment to be true. But, the, but the, the reality is, humans are humans, man. And humans can never be your source of hope. You got to have that in something a lot more firm and established. I told you where mine is, but I, wanna, I want you to think today about where is yours and how is it serving you. 
How is it serving you? How many tears is it going to take before you reassess this thing? How many, how many toxic relationships is it going to take before you reassess this thing? How many jobs are you going to leave and stay a short stint at because you're looking for the job to, to satisfy something that is a lot deeper and can't be satisfied by any career or success? Some of us, these last nine weeks, we need to make some reassessments and grab a hold or reestablish the position of hope in our lives. If that's you, I hope this makes sense and I hope this is something that helps you. As always, I always like to remind you all, make sure you like, hit that notification button so you can stay in this network and always be growing towards the success that you were created for, all right? That's all for this week. I appreciate you all tuning in. I'll see you all same place, same time next week reminding you that success is your destiny. Till next time.